Hello everyone, and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Now that Maddie Barton is in the hospital following his altercation with Samson Dingle in prison, his family members in the village are under even more pressure to find out the truth about what really happened. Thus far, Maura Carey and Amy Kane have been standing up for Maddie since they know he would never use violence against someone else. In the meantime, Lydia and Sam have taken Samson's side, accepting his claims that he is an innocent victim. In a brand new spoiler video, we witness Kane's explosive entrance into the Dingles and it doesn't look good. As Mora frantically attempted to get Samson to acknowledge that he was lying about Maddie attacking him without warning, it appears that Samson had reported Mora to the police for kidnapping him. Watchers are aware that Samson is afraid of what would happen if he admitted that Maddie is innocent. After all, Maddie was only carrying a knife when Samson's companion Josh shoved him in order to obtain the money from the hides till. Samson is attempting to protect his own reputation because he fears going to jail and confronting Josh. So far, Samson has only been more insistent on his story despite all of Kane, Mora, and Maddie's efforts. It appeared as though Samson was about to confess when Maddie spoke with him directly, but instead he went to the police and reported Maddie for bothering him. This led to Maddie's bail conditions being deemed violated which is why he is currently in prison and facing a situation where his transgender identity has caused him to fear for his life. As he has done throughout this plot, Sam is still standing by his son in the video while Cain lets out his rage. He tells Samson that even if his family is still defending him, Maddie is in the hospital as a result of him. My son was attacked by Maddie, Sam maintains. Samson refuses to tell his father the truth, despite Kane's repeated entreaties. Kane informs Sam that by reporting Mora to the police, he has violated the Dingle Code. He claims, we never rat on our own. You are aware of that. For a brief while, the two brothers are locked in a confrontation as Sam angrily demands him to leave the house, fearing that Kane would disobey. However, he turns and walks away and Samson appears relieved that he appears to have gotten away with it once more. But has he? Lydia becomes distressed, and it appears that Samson's shield of support may finally be cracking. Is the disclosure of the truth imminent? When asked about his future in soap operas, Sam Hall, who plays Samson Dingle in Emmerdale, responded with only three words. The actor and James Cooden, who plays Sam Dingle on TV, had a conversation about the future of the iconic characters in soap operas during their appearance on Loose Women on Wednesday. It happens after it was revealed earlier this year that Sam, 20, had been fired from the popular ITV soap opera after 15 years. Although his departure has not been officially announced, Sam has stated since May that he is not being killed off. On Loose Women on Wednesday, Actors Sam and James were interrogated about their prospects in soap operas. Do you reckon you've got another 15 years in you, Sam? Questioned guest panelist Mariella Frostrup to Sam. The actor responded with a simple three-word statement. I hope so. James, who has portrayed Sam Dangle for nearly 30 years, joked in response to the same question, saying, I'll try my best as long as they'll have me. I'll stay there. Samson's demise appears to be revealed in next week's spoilers, which might mean the character's departure given rumors that actor Sam, who has played the part since 2009, is departing the ITV serial opera. As viewers will remember, Maddie Barton is too responsible for Samson's stabbing incident from last month, in which the knife he was holding wound up in his stomach after Maddie threw their expensive beers down the drain. Samson's new friend, Josh, confronted him in the startling circumstances. Even though he knew that Maddie and Annie had recently gotten married, he was still incensed at Josh for his persistent flirtations with Amy. 
When Nasty Josh began making remarks about Maddie being transgender, the situation got out of hand. Maddie angrily told them to leave, but Josh wouldn't go. Samson was pulled forward and onto the knife that Maddie was grasping by him. In horrible moments, Maddie was arrested and has been struggling in prison since Samson was taken away in an ambulance. Josh threatened Samson to adhere to his version of events in order to keep them out of jail with the young person lying to the police, even though there is no CCTV footage to support Maddie's accusations. Next week's spoilers suggest that Lydia and Sam Dinkle discover the truth about what really transpired. Lydia is upset that Samson wants to break the law, while Sam wants his son Samson to avoid justice. Soon after, Lydia begs Samson to go to the police station, where he eventually admits to the truth of the stabbing. Sam is incensed with Lydia and soon confronts the other members of the Dingle family. Mora is happy that her son, Maddie, might be let out of jail, but she soon has to deal with Sam's rage as their falling out becomes more pronounced and he punches his brother to the ground. Later in the week, Maddie is filled with hope upon learning of Samson's confession, but he quickly becomes paralyzed with terror when he is carried back to his jail cell, where transphobic Robbo is waiting for him and inciting him to use violence when it is revealed that his time behind bars isn't quite done. In another scene, Kane visits the Dingles to make sure Samson doesn't flee again, which causes tension between the brothers once more. Samson is anxious to be left alone with Kane. Will Samson leave the village? or will he also go to jail for tampering with the legal system? After learning about the relationship between Jay and Amit, Laurel is enraged. She finds it hard to accept that he has been deceiving her and her husband killed his biological father in retaliation for killing Rishi, who was his father. She now understands why Pollard has been lording it over in the hide and has been blackmailing Jay with the unclear situation. Jay claims he just can't face it, which infuriates Laurel, who has urged that he tell his brother, Suni, why their father actually left the community. While conversing in church, the couple gets into an argument, and after Jay makes fun of her late husband, Ashley, she sends him leaving, when Laurel suddenly starts feeling extremely lightheaded and passes out. She is alone herself. She tries to grab her phone in terror, but when she realizes she can't, her dread becomes even more. Thankfully, Gabby finds her and calls for an ambulance for her stepmother. Jay is attempting to summon the bravery to tell Suni what he did to their father, Amit, over at the hide. When Jay's phone finally rings, he's frustrated because it keeps cutting them off and finds out that Laurel is in the hospital. Will she be all right? And will Suni discover the awful reality? In another scene, Josh, Samson's ill-mannered friend, is upset with himself when Sarah accepts to eat lunch with him despite everything that has happened since the stabbing. However, Kane sends him packing after noticing him snorting about his granddaughter. In the wool pack, distraught father Charles is receiving a lot of abuse after learning that the police had thrown out Ethan's hit and run case. Caleb makes a choice when he sees Charity, the Vicar, and she remarks that he probably won't want to go back to a house that makes him think of his dead kid. Ruby is astounded when her husband arrives at mill with a visibly inebriated Charles. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.